I seen him retire, I had to go pick up a second job. Wow. So I'm like, I, I don't want to do that. He always yeah. told me never settle for a job because the job stands for just over broke, yeah. right? And doesn't mean don't don't have a job. You can start with the job, but don't end with the job. So that mm-hmm. kept me going over that three years. Like, even though it's tough, I got to keep pushing because right. I see if I don't keep pushing, I'll be at this job yeah. Yeah. until I'm 50 yeah, and yeah. retire, half my pension. How, it, 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 yeah. it don't make sense. I, I, Are you ready? We're going to run the yeah. play. Let's Do you go. know what it's like to come for nothing at all? But every day you just want it all. Do you know what it's like? Every day facing your fear, but believing that your blessing is near. Do you know what it's like? Growing up broken than most, but still being devoted the most. Do you know what it's like? Yeah, that's what the journey's about. Yeah. Let me show you. What's going on, y'all? This is Justin Owens. I'm your host, The Run The Play Show, where we help break down the top plays of success from top leaders, entrepreneurs, and other personalities by sharing their gems from their personal playbooks. And I'm excited today, y'all. First of all, we're doing something we never did before. We got three guests in the locker room today. You're talking about Derek Boone, Ramel Newers, and Kenny Smith. Everybody call him Smitty, though. So we're going to be talking about real estate from residential to commercial to finding the money with business credit. And y'all know me, we got to talk about some responsibility with it as well. If we're going to give you the plays, we got to watch out for the pitfalls as well. So we're going to talk about it all. So I'm excited to have y'all in here, man. You know, this is a, a necessary conversation, especially in our community, um, to, to get tangible assets, man. You know, it's like, look, I'm, I'm big on crypto. I'm big on other investments. But I think real estate is, they ain't making no more land. Oh, no. You know, and, uh, you know, most people start in the residential space, but, you know, you elevate it and get into the commercial side. So I want to find out about what some of that that uh, that stuff is. But before, before we get into all of that, let's uh, let's talk about being a young brother that's making money. Right? You know, like, were, were you guys, like, the first people in your family to start making the, the, the six-figure, seven-figure type income? Yeah, 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 yeah. absolutely. Um, it's crazy. Broke many barriers in my family. So yeah. first generation college graduate. Yep. Um, now first generation seven figure business owner. Yep. And just new levels, you know. So I'm, I'm grateful for it. I'm blessed for it. It's challenges yeah. that come with it, mm-hmm. but you know, I, ra- I rather the, the, the good things that come with it. There we go. There we go. Yeah. What about you, my brother? For me, it was funny. My uncle yeah. told me one time, which probably like a year or two ago, probably like two years ago, he said, "Dang, he said you really gonna be the first millionaire in the family." Whole mm-hmm. time it happened already, but it just the fact that <laughs> so I ain't tell him yet. But. <laughs> yeah, but the fact that one they had really no concept of what was really going on. That but it was the other flip of the coin was like, dang, y'all really like had that much faith in me. Like you, you're going to be the one that do everything. Yeah. So it was like it was a dope moment, and one it was I realized like y'all don't really know, have no clue what's going on. But also it was a dope moment. Like dang, y'all y'all really believe in me that much. So yeah, yeah, yeah. No, f- facts. I love it. Uh. What about the date world? How is it? How is it in that space? I'm married. I'm married. <laughs> there we go. Good. I'm married world. Uh, just, you know, it come with ups and downs, but ultimately, is 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 has helped me get to this point. But oh, I put it like this, like because uh, I think this is a great conversation because most people are single. I'm a single brother, right? Dating, but then marriage is different, you know. So, d- do your wives work with you in the business? So um, I would say, not indirectly, I would say. So yeah, you don't, yeah. you're not full-time in the business, yep. but she supports me with things that I need to get done. So indirectly, yep. yes. Same. Yeah, so she doesn't. So one of the things I try to add in with smaller things, um, so she doesn't do main stuff like that. Like you said, but, like, for example, I wrote a couple ebooks. Hey, can you proofread this for mm-hmm. me and then grammar check it and then I'm going to send it over to the editor. Yep. Hey, we have a lot of in-person events we call them like VIP days or property tours. Hey, can you come and set the room up before the people come in and yep. stuff like that? I think that's important because yeah. I always tell people because, you know, sometimes in this world you can get so caught up in like what people post on yeah. social media and it's like, oh, well, you know, everybody's relationship is a little bit different. Yeah. And instead of comparing, it's like, yo, what I found from people that I've talked to to have successful relationship is like, you just got to figure out what works for your family right. mm-hmm. and your relationship and make that work. Yeah. He's got two successful brothers up here that's obviously making it work. How long have you been married? Two, two years. Uh, 2020, oh, 2019. 2019. I got that good love, too. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> love, I love it. I love it. And they're making money. I think that's a sign as well. Like, get you some money, but get you somebody that you can trust as you start building it. That's another foundation, you know, I, I truly believe. Like, a lot of times, uh, I know some people that told me they actually went do business 
Yeah. With a man that's not married. Yeah. Mm. My, my mentor was like that. Because he was like, if somebody else hasn't trusted you with their life, why should I trust you? Mm. That's deep. That's yeah, deep. yeah, yeah. And they also said, if they, the man is married and he's cheating, he's going to look at it with a side <laughs> eye. Yeah. Because it's like, here it is, you gave a vow, mm -hmm. and you're not doing what you said. So just a yeah. thought. I'm not telling y'all what to do and not to do with your life, but I'm just throwing that out because there are some people that do think like that. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there are some people that, that that literally is like a hard no at a certain age. Like you 20, they don't expect you to be married. But by the time you get 35, 40, they yeah, look at you asking questions. It's like, okay, because at this point, you run across somebody that's decent. Right. And so, you know, I think it's almost like sometimes with a guy, if you see a lady that's attractive and, you know, single at 45, if she wasn't married, you might be like, so what's, hey, so what's going on? You know what I'm saying? Like, Why are you single? Yeah. It, and so so what I think, you got going on? Yeah, like guys think the same way sometimes yeah. when it comes to business. So, again, I'm not saying that's my personal philosophy, but I am just saying you're looking at two guys, they got it going. I'll ask you this question. When did your business start taking off? My business started, so I got into real estate 2017, mm -hmm. my, like March 2017, the exact date. And be honest with you, it started taking off right out the gate. Surprisingly, kind of messed me up. Wow. Because, um, so for me, I don't have a college degree or a corporate background or any. So I, when I got in, I had to yeah. hustle. So I gave it every last ounce to tie this back in a relationship. I gave it every last ounce I had. I was going from four in the morning to midnight every single day. That's where I learned a relationship aspect because I almost got single my first year in yeah. because she was like, yo, I don't even see you. Like, so. How did you navigate that? So, and this is something we talked about. Yeah. What I did early on was, okay, Sundays I'm off. Sunday is family day. We go binge watch TV. We can go to freaking Florida. We can go wherever you want to do, but Sunday is your day. But what I realized is that gave Monday to Saturday for me to max out mm. because one of the one of the definitions of happiness is having something to look forward to. So yeah. if you run around, she has nothing to look forward to. There's no mm -hmm. day. So what if it's Thursday and I've been running Monday to Thursday, I just got two more days and then mm -hmm. like Christmas, I got 30 more days till Christmas. Yeah, like so it's that. something to look forward to. So that really helped out a whole lot. But, so um, on that Sunday, you like you don't take no calls, don't respond to no emails. Man, you like, sneak and do a call, but yeah. like, I gotta go to the bathroom. <laughs> you're on the toilet, yeah, like, no, no. But like no, in front of your though. face, like no, no, no. And that kind of really helped out. Um, like I said, that first year we did. Um, so I started out selling houses. So I sold about eighteen houses that first year. So it kind of took off right out the gate. Wow. Then the next year I doubled up. And then um, the next year after that, I went and hired a team. So that gave me Saturdays and Sundays off. So it really took off from there. And then that's when we kind of switched. What really changed the game was when I switched into from selling houses to buying houses. So now I was able to, because when you sell a house, you're only making maybe 10000 15000 I had some deals where I did like sixty, seventy thousand just off of selling house. Mm -hmm. But when I actually started actually owning it, that's when you can do like a six-figure check. Mm -hmm. That's 2020, 2019, 2020 is when that really started happening. So that's when it kind of went from like six figures to like, all right, now we yeah. jumping up a little bit more. Okay. What about you? Yeah. When did it? So my business didn't kick off fast. Like, like hey, yeah. so <laughs> I started in 2014, but I got my first deal in 2017. So it took me three years to actually close on my first deal. Right. But that was my home run deal. I had a six figure deal. I made $157,000 was my very first deal. That's dope. Hundred and what? Hundred and fifty seven thousand. Wow. My yeah. very first deal. So it took me three years to get there, going through the challenges, the ups mm. and downs. But once I got that first deal, that's when everything started jumping off. So let's let's how. talk about the three years. So the three yeah. years there was no deals. It was deals, but it would fall through. Right? You know what I'm saying like, but no closed deals. No closed deals. No. Okay. So how how does one make it as an entrepreneur in the world where <laughs> I see everybody on social media and it appears that's that everybody's getting success yeah. today? Everybody. How do you stay focused for three years? with no commissions to get to a point to now you've done extremely well. So I worked a nine to five job as well at the same time, right? Okay. And I didn't do, I didn't do sales. I was straight jumping into investing and buying properties and fixing up and flicks and fix uh fixing them and flipping them, right? Mm -hmm. So I was working part time yeah. and also on my business. So keeping my income coming in on the side helped me stay afloat, right? Mm. But at the same time, you know, I had motivation around me. My dad he retired 30 years, but I seen him retire and had to go pick up a second job. Wow. So I'm like, I, I don't want to do that. He always yeah. told me never settle for a job because the job stands for just over broke, yeah. right? And doesn't mean don't don't have a job. You can start with the job, but don't end with the job. So that mm -hmm. kept me going over that three years. Like, even though it's tough, 
I got to keep pushing because right. I see if I don't keep pushing, I'll be at this job yeah. Yeah. until I'm 50 yeah, and yeah. retire, half my pension. How, it, it, yeah. it don't make sense. How, how did you, the, the mentality of staying positive and staying focused through that three years, what was that? Because I seen I was getting better. Okay. Right. So even even though, though I ain't closing no sales, even though I ain't closed, but I was better with being on the phones. Yep. When I first get on the phone with a seller, I'm nervous. Like I go, I do a cold call. When they don't pick up, I'm I'm actually excited. Like damn, they didn't pick yeah. up, right? Mm-hmm. Because I'm nervous to even have that conversation. Correct. So now when I call and they don't pick up, I'm upset because yeah. I'm more you know confident in what, right? what I'm yeah. doing. So throughout the time. And, and then it's a numbers game. So in real estate, we always mm-hmm. talk about like how many offers it takes to get that one deal, mm-hmm. how many leads you need to get in order to be able to have one uh, one good closing, right? So as I started to understand the numbers, I knew it takes about 100 prospects, right, before you get one lead, right? And then out of, out of that one lead, you got to make 20 offers before you get one deal, right? So when you break a lot of these things down, all right, I know I'm getting closer. So if I make 20 offers... All right, I'm gonna start looking around. I know my mm-hmm. deal about to come in there. Mm-hmm. So when That's I like, understand that, it, it keeps me grounded. Yeah, I think this is a great conversation because you had one person that took off fast, which is great, but it's the exception. I think I think what's dangerous about entrepreneurship though is when you try. I, I tell people you got rules and you got exceptions. Yeah. Your story is more like the rule. It's gonna take you some time. <laughs> you know, like just expect it to. But you might be the exception. Mm-hmm. You might be the exception. First deal come out, make incredible money, but. Regardless of which which route you take, you still gotta be consistent. You still gotta yeah. have the right mentality. You still gotta put yourself in the right environment to go up, to, to be able to go out there and win. And if you got a job, it's like yo, there's people. Everybody just want to focus on quitting their job. Yeah. But it's like you it sounds like you use your job as an investor and allows you to get through that phase. Because some people they get frustrated, and it's not really the the the, the career or the business that's frustrating. It's just like you just ain't got no money. Yeah. So like, get you a job. I've been telling people like, especially in this economy, like yo, you might need to go and get a job. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it, it's beyond the job as far as money, right? Yeah. Wait, like for me, I changed my mindset when I walked into the office. It wasn't I work for you; it was you work for me. Yeah. So yeah. I'm learning organizational skills. I'm learning leadership skills. I'm learning marketing. I worked at Pepsi, so I was yeah. selling soda. So it's similar to selling houses, right? Yeah. So mm-hmm. I was actually looking at it a different angle, which allowed me to get through the day because most people. They don't they, they they tap out because they're not looking at all the other benefits benefits that you're gonna get. Yeah, no, that's real. It's funny. Um, Go ahead. No, I was gonna add into I think also too is about who you surround yourself with. And like for me, my job before real estate, I was making ten dollars an hour. So I was like six hundred dollars every two weeks. So I had to I had the hustle. But also who you surround yourself with, like Neil, for example, I knew him back then. Yeah, yeah. I knew him back in twenty fifteen or whatever. Wow. So he was been his whole life. So yeah. this I'm calling him or I might hang out with him. He's running rapid. <laughs> so you just naturally and then my my direct real estate mentors, they doing the same thing. Like for example, Doug, like mm-hmm. I would hang out with Doug during the day, help him lay floors at different houses. So wow. my the you only in the trenches with it then. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We really active. So like the people who I look up to, who I call, I got direct, I'm on my day-to-day, like I would see Neil, Doug, and all them. This is a day-to-day thing, so it's like we're not doing it. You get what I mean? Yeah. So I started out the gate running rampant because the only people I knew did the exact same thing, so I didn't even know nothing else. Yeah. It would feel weird if I didn't work that many hours. Yeah. So it's kind of like by default, you just it just works out because you running you just going hard every single day every single yeah. day because the people you look up to is doing the same day or even people that you just hey what you doing oh we run around going through six houses a day i guess i'm gonna do the same thing and yeah. then by default you get success because you're not doing nothing else. i didn't do nothing else yeah i love it yeah so let's talk about getting into real estate mm-hmm. right so um this is now 2023 right so if you were to enter the game in real estate today mm-hmm residential, jump in commercial, where would you start? How would you start as a new person? So I wanna make it clear, I love my journey. Mm -hmm. I think it was perfect because I'm pretty much, it's nothing you can ask me that I haven't done before. Yeah, I've done real estate sales as an agent, I wholesale deals, I pretty much built deals from the, built properties from the brand up, rented houses, flipped houses, commercial stuff, I've done everything. So I wouldn't change it because I went through all the stages. Yeah. But at the same token, if I could start over, I still wouldn't change it. But for like a person starting out now, I would make sure my credit is A1 and then go ahead and tap into 
different personal and business credit and jump straight into investing. Okay. I didn't go into investing because I didn't know about the credit stuff. So obviously, if you need twenty thousand dollars down payment, okay, let me middleman houses or let me do get commissions to build up my money and then go into investing. But if I knew I could just get a credit card for twenty thousand, I would have skipped all of that and just went straight into investing. So yeah. I don't regret it because it made me a more well-rounded individual. But hindsight like twenty twenty. I would own more houses than I do now if I would just knew I could just get a card and swipe and uh, then put, use that as my down payment. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, not having a job, you feel like that would still work for the average person? Like, okay, let me. So, if you don't have a yeah. job, yeah, 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 for sure. Because a lot of times, people. So for so for example, I know a lot of people that have great credit and don't have a job because right. they're utilizing just cash. They're not they're not even looking at credit cards because they're like, I don't have no job, so there's no point for me to go after that. Right. So a lot of people already have 700, 750 scores by default. Also, people that don't have a job, their credit card limits are already low. So for example, I just was telling this story earlier, on one of my clients when I was an agent, they had a $1,000 Old Navy credit card. Mm -hmm. They had it maxed out at 900, so their credit score was like a 580. Yep. They put $800 on that card because she needed to buy a house, or you know, her, I don't say dream home, but her home for her family. She put $800 on the card, her score went up 100 points. Wow. So yeah, not having a job, you might not have these crazy, crazy limits, so it's easy to come up with five, six hundred, seven hundred dollars yeah. to get you up, whereas though you might have a job, you might be, oh, I got money coming in every yeah. day. I'm a max. I'm gonna just do this. I'm gonna yeah. do this. I'm in Macy's. Let me get another car. I'm in Neiman's. Let me get another car. When you don't have a job, you're a little more cautious about yeah. signing up for things. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. That, the responsible or, person. Or if you know you can't get approved, you're just gonna say no anyway. You know exactly. Like, there was a exactly. phase I was in. I'm like, no, nah, I'm good. I don't need nothing. Like, I already sure? know. Yeah. I'm like, yes, yeah, I would yeah, 20%, yeah. but I ain't got no good credit. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I just could. I could do it. Okay. So I like that. What about commercial? So commercial, I would advise, because I started in residential, so I've been in real okay. estate nine years, but yep. I've been doing commercial for the last two years. Right? Okay. Um, so started out with single families, duplexes, went all up to four four units, right? And I had about 40 doors, right? Million dollar portfolio by 28. But wow, in congratulations. Thank you. But in 2020, pandemic happened, right? Mm -hmm. So eviction ban, you know, a lot of people losing their jobs. You, we see what, what happened. Yeah. And I had tenants that stopped paying me rent. And I couldn't do anything because there was an eviction ban, but I'm stuck paying the mortgage, I'm stuck trash, uh, sewer, taxes, mm. and now my money is tight. And I actually quit my job around that same time because I had built up my portfolio. Yeah. I'm cash flowing, I think I'm good, but nobody predicted for this pandemic for to sure. happen, yep. right? So now my real estate business is, is shaky, to be mm. honest. Yeah. And that's how I got into the self-storage business because um, I was selling off some of my properties just for liquidate, get some cash back in the yeah. account. But one of my properties, I had a buyer that was giving me $20,000 more than what I was asking for, but he wanted me to make sure it was vacant. So I gave one of my tenants cash for keys. I said, till 2000 just go. I don't care what you owe me. I just need you out because I need to sell a property. He agreed, but I needed to put his items in the storage unit for 90 days just so he could you know, move throughout this transitional phase. When I went to put his items in the unit, everything was sold out in the area. And that's when the light bulb came on. I need to be in this business. Like, What's going on? Sold that property, got my profits, purchased a self-storage facility. Now, I use the SBA 7A loan. Okay. And um, for, those, for those of you that do not know what the SBA 7A loan is, they specifically finance you when you buy self-storage because it's not only real estate, but it's a business, right? Mm -hmm. So that's why you got qualify it. for SBA. Um, but they only, you only have to come to the table with 10% down. So for a newbie that's listening to this podcast right now, that's why we teach going and getting business credit cards yep. and understanding credit because you can actually fast track your process. So right now I have three facilities under contract. $95,000 is my down payment. Well, for all I, three. For all three. Now, I got a great deal negotiating. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I'm saying that to say because $95,000, you can go get that few credit cards, 0% interest, and that may mm -hmm. be your startup for a down payment. Got it. Um, but I will say this, right? Be, and it's similar to what you said. I started in residential, so because I had that foundation, it made it easier for me to transition yeah. into commercial. Yeah. So if for somebody just listening to this and want to go jump into self-storage just out the gate with no residential experience, yeah. it's going to be tougher. So I would say go to a residential route first. You can actually buy a single family, make your money, and then double up and get to the self-storage at some Got point. It. What, what are pitfalls y'all see with real estate right now that like a new person jumping out there may run across? Interest rates. Yeah. Interest okay. rates. Explain that. So it's a, it's a two-sided coin of that. Interest rate is a bad thing, interest is a good thing. So right now, um, 
what we do, we do the Burr method. So we'll buy a house, we'll go and fix it up, we'll rent it out, and then we'll go ahead and refinance it, right? So the problem is the higher your mortgage payment, the less your cash flow. Yeah. So let's use, for example, I got a property that I'm renting out for $1,500 a month. My mortgage is, when I got it, when I refinanced it, is 8%, I mean, not 8%, I'm sorry. It was 4%. Mm -hmm. So my mortgage payment was eight hundred dollars. So I'm cash flowing a nice piece. Yeah. I also pulled thirty four thousand dollars exact out of that property. So I got thirty four thousand on the front end, and then I'm making seven eight hundred dollars a month every single month. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Tenants on auto pay. Now if that same situation was now where the interest rates are seven eight percent. Now my mortgage payment will be more so a thousand eleven hundred dollars. Mm. Now it gets certain kind of tight. Yeah, so it might even be twelve, twelve hundred dollars. So now it gets tighter and tighter. So that's pretty much what's the problem with with everything going on right now. Also, the interest rates went higher, and also banks got a little more stricter. Mm. So now, before you could pull eighty percent of a property, you can't do that anymore. Well, in Philadelphia, I can't speak for yeah. Wisconsin, but mm -hmm. you can't pull eighty percent out no more. Some banks won't even let you do seventy five percent. They'll make sure out at seventy. So where it gets tight at, if you ran your numbers, so for example, um, well, a lot of a lot of people do, they'll do 70% of what it's worth. So if a house is worth $100,000, I'm gonna buy it, I'm gonna put money into it, I'm gonna sell it or refinance at 100,000. So you wanna be 70% of that. Yep. So that means I wanna buy 50, put 20 into it, buy for 20, put 50. However you chop it down, I don't wanna be over 70%. Okay. What I do, I do my numbers at 65%, so it's a great deal for me. Yeah. The problem is, you're doing it at 70, thinking I'm gonna do 80%, and I'm a, that 10% extra is gonna go right in my pocket. Correct. But if banks lower their stuff down to 70, you might not get nothing. You're not getting nothing. But also, what happens is, if the bank has strict fees, because now they're increasing some of their fees, you might actually have to pay to refinance. Mm. Or some banks, which some banks are doing, they, they're making it to where you have to do it at 65% if you don't have a house long enough. So you did this too fast in like a month. Mm. Some banks, only some, they'll do 60 So now you really got to pay to go in and refinance. That's right. where it's getting hard. The economy and everything, they're making it a little more stricter. Yeah. The good side of that, the interest rates is, with interest rates, they're so high, a lot of people aren't buying anymore. If people aren't buying anymore, house is what? They're sitting. Yeah. The house is sitting, what people do? drop their prices. Yeah. So now people like us can go in and pick up stuff dirt cheap because if your house has been sitting on the market for three months, if I come to you with 20000 30000 less, you might you might consider that. Yeah. Because you're going to be paying that monthly mortgage payment anyway, so you're like, I might as well take a loss now and delay the inevitable. Mm -hmm. So Yeah. What about you? Similar to what he said, um, what I would add to that is being over leveraged, right? Mm -hmm. So, yeah, and I love what you question. talked about yeah. responsibility because yes, we teach mm -hmm. use business credit cards, 0% interest to go buy, but now you got to move with speed and have the strategy because if you don't use that money wisely, after the 12 months, your interest rate ain't 0% no more. Yeah. You need to about 18, 20, 25%. Mm -hmm. So now you have that payment on a credit card. And if you didn't buy that property at a discount, which what we just talked about, mm -hmm. you're over leveraged, right? Mm -hmm. And that's the people that you see foreclosures yeah. and getting evicted and, gets tight. you know, yeah. it, it gets super tight. I if a person is in that situation, right? Because I, I, we might be talking to two people right now. One person's like, okay, I'm brand new to this. Mm -hmm. Might be a person that's like, yo, okay, <laughs> I, I did all of this. <laughs> I over leveraged. That's me. I messed up. What is, is there any hope for them? Absolutely. Yeah. So, so if you over leverage, one of the things that you, the best thing to do is, so if you over, it's one thing to be over leveraged with credit card debt and maybe over leveraged with utilizing a lender and you just didn't get the best deal. The best thing to do is talk with your lender. Like, okay, what is like, what options do we have? Because mm -hmm. what can happen is your interest rate may be high, but also the value of the property may went up since the last time you bought it. Okay. Let's say you bought the house six months. Like real, real scenario. Let's say you bought the house six months ago, and then now your refinance is a little funny. You the numbers are tight. Let's say you got four hundred thousand, and the numbers are tight. But in six months, the property could have went to four fifty now. That fifty thousand dollar increase yeah. in value gave you just enough room to make the whole thing make sense again. Got it. Yeah, I bought a property where we thought the value was five hundred thousand. Things happened with permits with the city; it pushed it back a year. Well, in that same year, so many developers start coming around, start digging holes, start building. Our value increased to eight hundred and ninety-six thousand dollars, like the exact dollar. Wow. So that increase 
changed the whole game. So we was able to reconstruct the loan because because the permits pushed us back so so far. We had to redo the loan all over again. But now we structured it where we were able to pull a little bit more money out and we put a year's worth of monthly payments into the loan. So now we don't got no monthly payments, so it's just straight cash flow. Wow. Yeah. So things like that can yeah. happen. You just gotta pay attention to what's going around in your area. Yeah. What if I messed it all up already? And I'm like, because maybe I'm looking at y'all like, okay, I want to get back into the game, but I want to learn from some people that's really doing it now. Mm -hmm. Is there any hope for me to get back in and learn to do it the right way? Hell yeah. Yeah, so you got to get creative, mm -hmm. right? And I, I was over leveraged, mm -hmm. right? So I, you know, I talked about my very first deal, yep. made that money, but at the same time, I'm going into new deals now and thinking I got it all figured out because I made money on this deal. It's, it's a different deal, right? Yeah. So I bought a property on an auction online. When you buy properties online, um, it's like sight unseen. So it's a blind property. Yeah. You're just buying it in hopes that, that you got a good deal, but you're getting it for cheap. So it's yeah. risk. Right? Yeah, so I got it for cheap. <laughs> yeah. But now I walk the property and it's way more <laughs> than what I expected. Now I get the contractors in there and they overcharging me because I don't understand. I can see it from my naked eye, but I yeah. don't know everything that the contractor's doing. And I end up being over leveraged on credit card debt, I'm over leveraged on the property. So I'm not even able to refinance out. I, I was I was at that spot. So what I had to do is get creative and figure out, all right, I learned through the process. Right? Yeah. Yes, yes, it was a it was a challenging time, but what did I learn through this? How could I utilize my influence to be able to get me out of it? Yeah. So I do something um, every year. I call it. It's called a family legacy meeting. Okay. So I bring my aunts, my cousins, my brothers, my sister, my wife, everybody in the family. Okay. They have a certain mindset. Yep. And we sit at the table and we talk financial literacy. And I this like this this idea was birthed out of my desperate situation <laughs> at work, right? Because I'm thinking like, how can I put people together? I, I see what I did wrong, but I just got to go back in the game and do it right. So I had this family legacy meeting. Everybody pulls up their credit report. Mm -hmm. We want to see who has the best credit profile. Everybody have an LLC. And now we just structure and see what pieces can we put together. My cousin, he works 40, 50, 60 hours a week. He's a correction officer, know nothing about real estate and credit, but he's a responsible person. He just pays his bills on time. Looked at his credit report. He had an 800 credit score, didn't even know it. Mm. So I say, yo, cuz, if I can get you some money, would you be open to it? He said, mm. all right, cool. So I put him on my business that was existing for two years with his good credit. Got him forty five thousand dollars in business credit in twenty four hours. Wow! And I took that forty five thousand. I said, I want you to be a private investor in this next deal that I have. And it was another single family that I purchased. I used hard money, which is what he just talked about. We had to come to the table with eight thousand dollars as far as down payment. Right. Mm -hmm. So I used the forty five thousand, liquidated the credit card, eight thousand down payment, the additional thirty something thousand I used to float the construction, which yep. paid contractors, and we still get that money back. But long, uh, to bring it to a close, right, that same property, we sold it, and I made $120,000 profit. Mm. So that one After day, his piece, too? What, what I, so $120,000 profit, paid him back his money, plus 20% return on his money, mm -hmm. and I had 80, a little over $80,000 back to my pocket, yeah. which helped me get back in the game. Yeah. And then from there, I kept going. But I yeah. had to get creative and say, all right, yeah. I, I see what worked, what yeah. didn't work. How can I leverage my influence? Yeah, to, yeah. To and, I, and that's what I think is like the importance of like, you know, you finding people that is, that's gone through some stuff. I always tell people like, anytime you pay somebody, you just, you're paying for their mistakes. Oh yeah, their, their pain, yeah. their losses. Like you, oh, yeah, that's yeah. that's really what you're paying for. Oh, you know, yeah, it's yeah. not it's not you just it's not just the cost of like, hey, learn from somebody. It's like, yo, I'm gonna help you navigate some of the stuff and some of the stuff that you may have already messed up. Mm -hmm. Well, I can't change your past, but I can tell you like that was in play right there. Like I, even the idea of having a family meeting about just that is a great conversation yeah. for most people because unfortunately in our communities we just don't talk about money like it was nope. it's like a it's like a hidden thing it's like yo we just don't we're not going to talk about that you know what i'm saying it's like, like it's, when them kid when you when parents say hey grown folks are talking don't yeah. go in there it's like same thing hey we ain't talking about that out mm -hmm. right now yeah like I, I remember like sometimes like family we might have a trip planned and the trip just didn't happen like what happened we're not talking about that. Don't, don't bring up Disney World no more. I'm like, why? <laughs> Say it again. You know what I'm saying? I'm like, okay, all right. Yeah, you got it. And it, But you realize, like, as you get older, it's like, okay, there were some uncomfortable conversations maybe around money or maybe around credit or just decisions that you make. So I think that's, that's really important. I know we got to talk about credit. So I don't know who want to, you know what I'm saying? We got to get Smitty in here. I don't know yeah, who's yeah, we'll, well, we'll, we'll bring somebody back. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah, yeah y'all both talking about. Grab him. Yeah. Y'all so both this, talked about. Uh, this guy is like the truth. Okay. What's up, man? What's going on, man? How you feeling, man? 
Everything's good, man. Welcome to the locker room, brother. I uh, appreciate saying? being Hello. here. I appreciate Stay. being here, man. You got, the, you got the right shirt on, too, man. You know yeah, yeah, support my yeah. yeah, yeah. brand. Appreciate I think that. you got the number one brand in the entrepreneur world. I believe so, man. I really believe <laughs> that's so, That's dope, bro. That's, that's, that's Thank dope. you, bro. Yeah. Thank you, man. Uh, glad you're here, too, because I think this is a... Uh, you know, credit, I always tell people, is one of those things that most people don't figure out until they get it wrong. Mm. It's like last that's how I learned about credit. I was like, mm -hmm. oh, y'all really meant I needed to send that every month. You know what I'm saying? Like my yeah. first credit card, it was Capital One. I got a, it was three hundred dollars, and I was just going to like Zaxby's and stuff. You know what I'm saying? Swiping the card, and then the minimum payment was like eleven dollars. I'm like, ah, I get it next month. Then the next month it was like it moved up. It was like twenty five dollars. I was like, ah, I get it next month. Third month, shut me down. <laughs> I'm like, dang, I didn't know they really do that. So really, I spent like probably two years of my adult life trying to fix something that I just didn't. I didn't know, and part of it was because we I ain't talk about credit with my parents. Not that I couldn't, but we didn't never have really a dialogue about money. Mm -hmm. yeah. So now I'm not about to try to talk about credit. And so I, I see a lot of people that struggle with credit because they haven't had the right education, the right information, or even been in the right environments to even learn about it. So I'm excited to learn from you, man. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? This is this is yeah. gonna be good. First of all, how'd you learn about it? I learned about it because my credit was bad. Okay. Uh, yeah, here we go. But I really uh, got a friend of mine who got into it first. Okay. And he learned from uh, 500. So yeah, yeah. Him 500, RPX. He was in it first. So okay. I learned from him learning from him 500 and yeah. him coming back to me and just showing me what he thinks he was doing. Okay. The first, this is what changed my life almost too. I was in the midst, my credit score was bad, 400s. Mm -hmm. And then he went into the world you, first. You glanced past that. You said 400s? Yeah, like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> <laughs> you want to bring it back up? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I was, in, I was in the 400s, yeah, but he came and went through that learning curve of learning everything first, and then he was just in his learning binge. But when he came out of his learning binge, and he got approved for like his first $10,000 and $20,000 credit card, and he came back and showed me, and I was like, wait a minute, you mean to tell me you got approved for $30,000 in one day? Yeah. And I can't even come to save $30 in my possession, you got, you know, in my life. I never saved up thirty, forty, fifty thousand yeah. dollars, but you can get approved for it in one day. Yeah. It really changed my whole perspective. Yeah. <laughs> so then after he's after I seen that, I told him to like, bro, teach me everything about this thing. I went on a learning binge myself. Yeah. And I doubt I dove into it. I wanted to know everything about I always love money. Yeah. But so credit, I really I believe it resembles right into money anyway. Yeah. So I got approved for ten thousand, it's ten thousand to me. Yeah. So uh I, I just went into a learning binge and learned it myself. And then eventually I got into RPX and all that stuff too. So so help me understand it, because like I'm not gonna lie, like I've had probably last week somebody called me and said, Man, you know anybody do business credit? I'm like, bro. I know a lot of people that say they do business credit. Yeah, for sure. But honestly, for me, it's always been a great area because I don't know. There's only like one or two people that I know mm -hmm. that the stuff they talk about is like 1,000%, right? Yeah. And then I talked to Neil. He's like, no, nah, this dude is the truth. Mm -hmm. So I want to know, like, one, how can I, if I'm a person that's looking to get into business credit, how can I look out for somebody that is that that is not real, that is a scam because there are a lot of people that lose their money paying people money for stuff and then it's right. not real. Yeah. So what, I, what, what would you look out for? I would the actual results of what they have. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, social media, most of the time you're gonna see results. Mm -hmm. um, I actually show what I've got to prove for myself and what I've experienced for myself. Also, the people that I teach, mm -hmm. their results and what they get approved for. So if a person come through me to learn from me and they getting approved for 200,000, or they getting approved for high limit credit cards of 25, 30,000, I believe that's real results. Yeah. Um, if I was able to leverage my credit or business credit to start me a semi truck company or my Airbnbs in Miami or something like that, right? Um, I believe that's a resemblance of me actually doing it myself and experiencing it. Yeah. And I, I could be able to elaborate on how I did it. Yeah, you know? no, I like that. Yeah. So you said the person should ask some questions before they just start. Uh, you definitely want to ask some questions. Yeah. Uh, you definitely want to uh, like, try to fill people out as best as you can. Yeah. Because uh, it is a lot of cap on the internet. It is. It There's is. a lot of people saying this or that. Um, also, uh, I like to see them, my, people's names and business names on things like, what is your credit score? Yeah. What is it? Like, well, show me your credit yeah. score. Uh, what's your business credit score? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? You, what you have, not just what you say you know, but what is your actual thing. Okay. So I got over 800 credit score. You can check mine. Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Type of thing. So one of the things really cool, I just want to add to this, and you, I know you, you, you know, just to add what you said, when we get people business credit and business funding, we don't charge until you get funded. So like, that's a red flag, right? Yeah. Somebody that's looking to go get funding is like, give me two, 3,000 up front, and then I'll get you this, maybe you want to go question it, right? Yeah. Let somebody get you the money, it's in your hand, it's proof, then you pay. Got it. Got yeah. it. Okay. Yeah. So uh, let's talk about mistakes first, right? Because that's probably, I think that may be where more, more people are. Like, I guess maybe some people just don't have no credit. That was me at one time. Some people just mess it up. 
So you had 400 credit score. Yep. Talk about the process. Okay, I have bad credit today. Right. From having bad credit today to me being able to set up business credit, right. what does that process look like time-wise? Is that like... So uh, it could be two different ways. So some people can have bad scores based off high utilization. Yep. So for a good point for that would be for you to build the EIN and LLC up by itself, separate from the personal so that we can build it up enough that we can get approved for things on the business side. Okay. So then if that's your only issue that you got high utilization, if we get approved for money on the business side, we can leverage that and liquidate that to now pay off the personal side. So mm. that now the utilization goes all the way back down. Now you're back to a higher score, and now we can leverage that to get access to more money to then yeah. use it to leverage to invest. That's one route if you got high utilization. Yeah. Now if you got collections and you owe repos yeah. and you know bankruptcy stuff like that, now you have to go through the process of cleaning it. Got it. So now you got to start learning methods to dispute things off your credit report mm. and not just on like credit karma. Yeah. So <laughs> the number one thing I see people doing is I'm gonna get on credit card and say this ain't mine. This yeah. ain't mine. That's not a proper way to be able to dispute something off your credit report. So you have to learn your due diligence of how do I properly dispute this for I can accurately try, accurately try to remove this from my credit report. And once you learn that metrics, you know, then it'll be easier for you to start progressing to having good credit and then being able to leverage it. But you got to learn the credit cleaning process. Mm -hmm. uh, and then a lot of people don't know is that uh, it's it's removable. Like student loans, mm -hmm. repos, bankruptcies. These things are removable. We just are not educated on how to remove them or how to go about removing them. Mm -hmm. So one quick way that everybody can be able to, you know, attack a certain account on the credit report is we like to call it factual disputing. So we can look at our credit report, right? So we got Experion, Equifax, and TransUnion. Mm -hmm. It's a law that says information of ours have to be 100% correct across all three bureaus. If it is not, that is a violation of the law, mm -hmm. right? So now that I know that, I can go look at my credit report, which, which most people don't know how to in-depth we look at their credit report. Let's just say I got a Sprint bill. And uh, the date opened on it, right? Mm -hmm. The date opened is 4-5-2023, mm -hmm. right? That's on Experion. But if I look at TransUnion and it says 3-17-2023, so you mean to tell me that this account been open on two different dates? Mm -hmm. that's, yeah, no, it's that's, that's false. Yeah. That's, that's, that's a violation of the law. This is a reason why I can dispute it and be able to get it removed off my credit report now. Mm -hmm. Not the fact that I owe it. Yeah. Not the fact that it's not mine. We know you probably did it most of the time. Yeah. But the fact that y'all violated the law and as now we can dispute it on our, you know, as a consumer to remove it off our credit report. Got it. So even if I owe if I owe ten thousand to this company, hey, I might still owe it in real life. But in the process of me cleaning my credit report, this can get removed. Got it. Give okay. Them. How does a person like what 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 uh, adjustments would you have a person make when it comes to credit, right? Other than because I think removing is is perfect, right? Mm -hmm. I, like when I was younger, I had to remove some stuff on my credit, but I also had to change some habits in myself. It's almost like yeah. being in a relationship with a girl and you just delete the pictures off your Instagram. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It don't change the fact that you probably weren't a good person in the relationship. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like you just got yeah. rid of the, the the proof that sure. it existed. Like what what are some tips, especially getting now? Now we're not just talking about credit, but like you got to even be more responsible because now we're talking about getting into real estate and mm -hmm. buying some stuff that you actually have to make actual payments on as well. You yeah. know what I'm saying? So it comes with a mindset shift, bro. Mm -hmm. um, getting educated, getting you a mentor, mm -hmm. um, and then you got to just start being smarter. Uh, if you want to make money for real, you mm -hmm. got to understand you got to wise up. You know what I mean? Yeah. And you got to be accountable and be grown. You know, yeah. it's, it's, it's really like st stop playing around and yeah. be a grown adult and take care of your stuff. But uh, a tip I also would say too, <laughs> don't spend the money if you don't got the money. <laughs> uh, literally, <laughs> literally spend the money if you have the money. So like, I'll run my life through my credit card for like gas, right? Yeah. If I don't have a hundred dollars in my bank account, I'm not gonna go try to probably fill it up for a hundred bucks. Yeah. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna be trying to spend my credit card money with money I don't have. Right. I'm not going on vacation for three thousand dollars off my credit card because it's available. I'm only spending it if I have the money to play with that vacation money, regardless. So mm -hmm. then I can use my credit card to reap the benefits of every dollar I spend, but then pay it back off of my money I was going to spend anyway. Yeah. Smart. I would rather someone play with it like that than go and try to just do anything. Yeah, I agree. That's that's smart. So give me give me some some business credit game okay. really quick and then once we understand some business credit game, talk about how we can now leverage that in the real estate side. Gotcha. Yeah. So the way that I accumulate, you know, fifty thousand or hundred thousand dollars, we call it business credit card stacking or lines of credit stacking. So uh I don't like to go to the routes of trying to get a big lump sum of loans. So okay. if you say we say our goal is to get a hundred thousand dollars. 
I don't want to say go to the bank and say, let me get a hundred thousand dollar loan because now the requirements are too crazy. Yeah. I gotta get two year tax return. I gotta have this. I gotta have a bank statement or whatever the case may be. We want to try to bypass that, and the bypass that would be for me to leverage my LLC, leverage my personal credit, which is about a 680, 700 credit score with no negatives and things like that. I can leverage both of those to be able to personal guarantor business credit cards. And I said we do business credit card stacking. So if I go to uh, Chase today um, and they want me to get a business credit card, they want me to pay a personal guarantor, I get approved for my ten or fifteen thousand. I am and on my way to the hundred thousand dollars. Yeah. I, I I literally leverage that with multiple different banks, with business credit cards, and I stack them up until I have a lot lump sum a lot of money. So if I get fifty thousand to a hundred thousand dollars off, maybe five to mm -hmm. ten different credit cards, I can accumulate enough amount of money for me to be able to take and leverage it. Uh, and then you got to do it strategic too. So you can't just go haywire with applying. So the strategic thing we do is knowing what banks pull from which bureaus so that you can strategically apply for them in the right manner. Hmm. So that means if I go get a credit card from a bank, it has to pull specifically from Experian right now. If I go get approval for another bank, it got to pull a different bureau. If I go approve for another bank, it has to be approved from a different bureau. So now I could get three different approvals with three different inquiries, but it only looks as though I got one inquiry in each bureau. Got you get what I'm saying? Yeah, so now yeah. I can get approved. I can get approved for a, more money now. Now I can go get three more or three more because I'm not racking up the inquiries in the one bureau so that I can get capped off. Got it. So now I can continue to get funded. Got it. How long do I have to have my, my LLC in business for to even start the business credit process? The good thing about having personal good credit is we can leverage that to get a brand new LLC. I can open up LLC in two days. By the, when I get my paperwork and stuff, I'm getting funded by the fourth day, fifth day. Leveraging my personal credit. Wow. Now, if we want it to be separate and only with your EIN and your LLC, then it'll be a process of you having to build out your business credit profile to be able to build it up and put yourself in a position to get funded. Got it. And that's something that you show people how to do? or that's Yeah. Something? Okay, okay. So uh, I show you how to be able to, it's like clean, build, fund, you know, get access to the money. Yeah. Then also how to create a stream of income off of it to get other people's funded and uh, charge a percentage. So that's my main thing I do now. I'm shifting more into that aspect of it. Uh, again, businesses, own, business owners, or entrepreneurs, access to the money so they can get invest or yeah. uh, teaching people how to start their own funding company so that you can make money off of this as well. Yeah. So if I teach you how to go get other people's LLC access to 100,000, 200,000, and we charge, we charge eight to 10%. Mm -hmm. So now I can turn you into learning how to create $10,000 clients, yeah. $5,000 clients with no big investment up front, no, over, no overhead. And you just need to learn the blueprint. Got it. I like it. So now I get the credit. Okay. Well, hold up, Gio. So I, I know we want to run the play, right? Yeah. <laughs> give me so play. I, it's give up, play. It's up to you. You got to give us the green light. <laughs> yeah. Play, give me play. I, I feel like you're going light on them right now. Yeah. Yeah. I, I feel like you, you should some give, give, them some, uh, give them at least two exact plays. Like, they had to go through the process, show, but you're right. Go ahead. They got to run the play. So if somebody meet X amount of requirements, mm -hmm. right? Tell them exactly what play to run. Like get, exactly what play to run. Yeah, to, to, right. give us two cool. two banks and how to do it. Yeah, if that's cool with you. Yeah, coach. please. Yeah, because yeah, yeah, yeah. because so, we don't yeah. run the play. Yeah, we, yeah you gotta, you gotta give them a play. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I'm listening. I was listening for a play. I'm, yeah, like, yeah, I'm, I'm listening. Play. Yeah. So uh, actually, I just left David Shan's uh, podcast, and someone in the crowd said they had a specific credit score. So I gave her a play. She got approved for nine thousand dollars. With on the show live, so when they see that, you'll be able to see that. But yeah. uh, my favorite bank I like to get people approved for ten thousand with is NASA Federal Credit Union. They will allow you to get a pre-approval first, right? So they allow you to get a pre-approval, and then they they typically approve my people from ten to thirty thousand dollars with one inquiry, uh, just with a pre-approval, probably having over a six eighty credit score. Uh, typically, the credit unions love to give high limits, yeah. right? So. Uh, Another one that we all love, everybody know about Navy Federal, mm -hmm. right? Uh, so if I wanna, if I can, I think I got like 80,000 with Navy Federal and credit cards. Mm -hmm. What Navy Federal will allow you to do is they allow you to get three different credit cards, but they allow you to get three different credit cards every like a, a 60 to 90 day time frame though. So if mm -hmm. I get one credit card, I gotta wait 90 days. If yeah. I get a second credit card, I gotta wait 90 days. If I get a third credit card, I gotta wait 90 days. But what, what pushes me to teach people how to get higher limits with it is we do a pledge loan. So a pledge loan, right? A pledge loan with Navy Federal will be for you to put your own money up as collateral, probably $1,000 in the savings. Mm -hmm. Once you do that, you can ask Navy for a pledge loan, right? So now when you get a loan from the bank with Navy, uh, we take the money that they give us, pay it back 90% off, right? And now we have a 90% paid off installment loan. And then now you build a relationship with the bank and Navy is a relationship-based relationship -based bank. So when you do that, that enhances your you know, uh, chances for you to get higher limits. So, uh, and then if you do that three times in a row, we can then accumulate probably 
25, 20, 60, $70,000 within one and day. You said it's called a what? Pledge loan. Pledge loan. Okay, so I get this pledge loan. Mm -hmm. And how much do I got? You said 90%. How much would the loan be for? Uh, well, typically how much you can afford. Uh, okay. So everybody can afford 2000 5000 10000 If you could, definitely would be dope. You know what I mean? Uh, but some people don't. You can start off with 200 five, Wherever you are, we just need to start. We got to build it up. So uh, we can start with 200 500000 I just say 1000 So if they give me 1000 but I take $900 of their own money and put it right back to them, mm -hmm. and I look like I paid off 90% of that loan now. So now when that reports to my credit within 30 days and I built a relationship with the bank, they are more likely to give me higher limits. So you want to put yourself in a better position. Okay. I like it. That's good. That's a play. You know what I'm saying? You better go, better go run it. You, you got to have a 680. Not impossible. You got to get. You got to put a little work in. That's what you talk about. The credit repair, I think, is really, really smart if you, if you mess it up. The best thing would be to do is, like, don't mess it up. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm really big on, like, I'm really big on credit responsibility because I was irresponsible. Like, I, I'm like, listen, y'all just... You know, because some people teach people like get credit and don't pay stuff off and get it. I'm like, okay, that's it's, it's called stealing, right? You know, so you got to <laughs> stay away from that. Um, um, but because the, the, the game is not really what's funny is 10,000 and 30,000, 50,000, 100,000 sounds like a lot to people at the beginning. And at the beginning, it was a lot. But then you realize in this the grand scheme of business, if you rip somebody off for $80,000, yeah. uh, you got the short end of the stick. Yeah. yeah. Because you're not gonna be getting no more money like that, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. And really, from what I hear, you could take the eighty thousand, hundred thousand, now put it into yeah. another business, yeah. real estate, commercial real estate, re whether it's residential, and now create more. So tell me about that. So now I get the funding, yeah. I got the money from the bank. Now what? Absolutely. So you, you ran this play. You, you obviously set everything up, everything up the right way, and now you can liquidate that credit and now use it as cash to go buy a self storage facility, right? So I'm gonna break it down step by step. Right? Okay. So SBA 7A loan, that's what it's called. Now with the SBA, they are gonna pull your credit. So 650 minimum credit score. Okay. They are gonna require a business plan, right? Mm -hmm. So you need to show them over the next five years, this is what I plan on doing. And I like the SBA because- Chat GBT, give me a business plan for five years. <laughs> <laughs> AI, AI. Exactly. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? All right, yeah, they yeah, yeah. Ask yeah. You, uh, for the business plan, credit score, I'm in the 10% down, right? Okay. Now we got a hundred thousand dollars. You put it ten percent down. You can get up to a million dollar facility. Okay. Now for me, you know, I'm about figuring out a way to get to a goal faster. If it takes you thirty years to do something, I need to do it in ten, right? Because yeah. my time is valuable. So I buy one self storage facility, and we create multiple streams out of that one acquisition. Mm -hmm. So the first stream is obviously we're renting out the units, and with this climate, foreclosures, people losing their jobs, a lot of people was downsizing and rooming because. Yeah. They can't afford it. Yep. And now that they can't afford it, with that extra stuff that they have, there's no space for it, they go rent out a unit. Got it. Now we also partner with the insurance company. When you rent out a unit, it's mandatory for you to get insurance on your unit because if there's a fire, if a flood, anything happen, we want to make sure you tap in with the insurance company. Yep. But we have a partnership with the insurance company where we get paid 30% revenue, 30% commission off the insurance, right? Okay, like the annual, pre whatever the premium Correct. is. Correct. Wow. So and on top of that, now we also partner with U-Haul. Mm -hmm. So you could actually have U-Haul come and provide the transportation services yep. on your storage facility. Yep. And you and, and I like this because I'm not necessarily in another business, yep. but I'm getting paid from another business because I am the hub. Similar mm -hmm. to So they just come and drop the trucks off in the the little trailers and all that stuff and you just get well, they, they give their own employee. that They put an employee in the office, right? And wow. they manage the trucks and do the entire business. You just give them the space to do it because you own the facility. Wow. So I think of it as That's like a win -win. Uber, Amazon, yeah. right? It's the hub. And then everybody else kind of work their business. You can partner with a moving company. So somebody else that has their own moving company and services, you refer out tenants that rent out the units and they need moving services. And now you get paid commissions, right? Vending wow. machines, we also put it on the facility, right? But mm -hmm. again... Without the foundation, without the strategy, without you understanding high level business, it will be tough for you to do this. But if you do get it done, you then took the hundred thousand dollars in credit and then turned it into multiple streams. But you started with one business that you built up, and now that extra capital. And, and this is why I love commercial real estate because the value of your apartment building or storage facility is based upon your net operating income. So the more yeah. revenue I could generate out of my facility, the higher the value is. So by adding these different streams on, I can increase my value a million, two million, till now refinance and go pay off these cards. Yep. And then go do it all over again. And I built great relationships. Just, that's a great point you made because a lot of people go get 50,000 and 
don't do it the right way, but you shot yourself in the foot because yeah. you could have got five million, ten million if you built up the right relationships. Yeah. So pay it off. Great relationship with Smitty and the crew and Bank of America. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And now I'll go do the exact same thing over and over again. So I, I just say let's do that process once a year. You don't even need to do five facilities, one facility per year, five years from now. Yeah, it's, it's it's the it's the long term long term game versus yeah. the short term game. Yeah. You know, and I really think I think the credit report is what we do in real life. It's like if I borrow some money from a man and I don't pay him back, he gonna be upset, and he probably gonna tell other people, "Hey, man, don't loan this dude no money." Yeah. To me, that's all the credit report is. It's like yeah. my way to announce to everybody yeah. else, like this dude is irresponsible mm-hmm. and don't trust him with no money it's, or trust it's, her. It's character. That's what they say. So yeah. when you go in a fill out an application, the bank says they want to see your character, mm-hmm. and when they say they want to see your character, that's your credit report. Yeah, it, it tells you. If you're responsible, if you're reliable, yeah. Look, <laughs> it does a lot. I always ask people if they need some money. I'm like, yo, you can't get nothing from the bank. Cause I, that tell me right there. Yeah. That <laughs> they means don't pay your on time. they don't trust you either. You know what I'm saying? I use that with my family. No, seriously. Yeah, no, no. no seriously. Yeah. Uh, somebody borrowed 500 from me. Okay, I got you. Mm-hmm. You don't pay me back. Your line is over. It's like demolished. You don't get no more money from me. Yeah, no. no if you I, pay I'll it back, I lend it out. Yeah, no, I, t- <laughs> I talked to a football player about it. He was like, because you know, a lot of athletes uh, go broke. And a lot of times, because they loan that money, he said one of his rules he set with family. He's like, typically I didn't loan money out, but he said the first statement I made with people is, "Listen, if you don't pay me this back, you'll never get money from me again." Mm-hmm. I just want you to know that. Mm-hmm. And so it's like, I'm like, dang, that was good. And then the second thing he said was, the day that we set it up, we're also setting up the payment arrangements and how you're gonna how you're going to communicate with me how this is going to be done. So you're going to pay me on this day, and will it be text, email, or phone call that you're going to be communicating with me? We send this all. I was like, dang, that's so good because <laughs> I just don't want to be, I don't want to deal with it either. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But it, I, anyway, we talk about credit, but I just thought we had a conversation about it. I thought it was pretty good because, you know, I think people should know if you don't pay people back, you, you ain't getting no money again. You know what I'm saying? So that includes people or the banks. Because all it is is relationships. And that, and that's one of the things I always like to talk about here. Because beyond money, beyond credit, I think the most valuable asset you can have in life with people is relationships. Yeah. Um, what are some things that you all have done in your life, your business, to develop and maintain relationships long term? Uh, give one, everybody one tip. One was with the banks, actually. Uh, my best tip to my people that I teach with funding and getting access to more money is to go in banks and build relationships with bank reps. Mm. So the way I go get high limit credit cards, and people ask me all the time, I see, I see on your page you get 50000 75000 uh, One of my friends just got approved for $100,000 on one credit card. That's not normal. Yeah. But the reason is being because everyone else is doing what everybody else is doing, applying online. Mm. But if you were to uh, start building relationships with people in the bank, with bank reps that pushes through your application for you, it's a, it's, it feels as though it's a different system. I've seen all the higher limits get approved via me pushing my applications through the bank reps that does business credit cards or does business line of credits. So then now you have a high, you have a better approval so, rate. So give me a little bit more context on that. So how do I go about building a relationship uh-huh. with them? Is it me just coming in, chilling it's, in the It's office? literally off a peer, a mm-hmm. peer giving you the re, like a, the play or the resource, you know? So that's what you pay for sometimes. You mm-hmm. pay for relationships or resources, stuff mm-hmm. like that. So if you pay for me, I give you my, my guy, go directly to him. Or if you're just a regular person in the world, yes, you go directly inside your bank and then you, you have a meeting or a sit down with the business credit card rep or the business line of credit rep or a person in business, whatever. You build a relationship. Hey, I want your number. Like, I want your email. Like, I want to ask you questions. Or I got, I got other people that might be coming here. I can send them to you mm-hmm. and stuff like that. You build that relationship, and over time, you'll have that main contact to be like, man, I know this person in Bank of America I met a few months ago. We've been rapping. I've been coming through there yep. for this product or that product. It'll make it a relationship off that as well. Wow. Wow. Mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. And, to, and to add to that, right, uh, it's two things, but is under promise over deliver. That's yep. how you build strong relationships in anything, whether it's yeah. marriage, friendship, Facts. you know, partnerships, mm-hmm. under promise, over deliver, right? Um, so to add to what he said about building relationships with the bankers, one of the things that we do in our program, we actually give you a lending pitch deck, right? So when you go into the bank, nobody's coming in with an actual pitch deck that outlines everything that you do. And now you got a QR code on it and it takes you to your social media pages. That's what's going to set you apart from any person that's going to the bank that want to build a relationship, right? Yeah. You do that with multiple lenders, and now they know you on a personal level. So when I speak to my lenders, they know, hey, how's the baby? How's everything going? Yeah. It's, it's a different conversation because right. I didn't go in there just to, hey, let's get a credit card, right? Mm-hmm. I, I showed myself. I have a pitch deck, but now I'm talking to you more about what I've done beyond just, just the business, right? And then the second thing I would say, um, this is what I do with a lot of my investors because I, I teach how to 
buy some storage facilities with none of your own money. Okay. When I say it online, they be like, oh, it's, it's not true, right? Yeah, yeah. Um, but it is true. Mm-hmm. I do it with none of my own money. I have investors that I raise the capital for, but I, I make sure that I give them more than what was expected. So if I told you I'm gonna give you back a 10% return, here go 15% return. Oh, I didn't expect it, but just doing extra things like that, under promise, over deliver, um, that's how you build true, strong relationships. Yeah, I love that. Uh, I always have a segment on here, and then uh, we'll maybe make one more swap. So, you know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, we can, yeah. you know, get, get everybody in. But I want to make sure I get this from you. Yeah. And then maybe anything that you didn't get a chance to share that you want to share. Mm-hmm. Um, but I always have a section, uh, segment called Breakdown and Breakthroughs. I believe every entrepreneur has had a breakdown. Mm-hmm. And how you, uh, the lesson that you learn in that will determine mm-hmm. if you have a breakthrough. Mm-hmm. So, can you tell anybody about a time period that you've had that you did have a breakdown as an entrepreneur in life, and then how you got through that, and then how you, how you got to your breakthrough? That's a, that's a dope question. Um, so it kind of goes back to the to 2020 and, yep. and the pandemic. I was doing multiple things. So when I made that $157,000 check, I'm thinking I'm up, right? I'm 25 yeah. years yeah. old yeah. and yeah, I'm starting different yeah. businesses. Like, I'm thinking yeah. it's a bunch of money. Now it's like, that's like <laughs> a jump change. But yeah. back then I was the man. Yeah. So I started a commercial cleaning franchise. Mm. I started a media production company. Yeah. I was lending out money to friends and family. Mm-hmm. I was doing everything under the sun. And then when the pandemic happened, my commercial cleaning company got shut down because a lot of businesses closed down. So yeah. I'm servicing bars mm-hmm. and um, doctor's offices. So they closed down. So now they don't need my service. So now I lose my commercial cleaning company, my media production company. I had to shut it down because the schools that we were shooting at, they closed, like everything closed. Now it's impacting yeah. me and my business. And I told you I left my job. So yeah. I'm like, damn, right? I had to go off of social media for eight months because wow. like I didn't I, I wasn't happy. I wasn't yeah. you know, my business was failing, right? But the the breakthrough in that was me doubling down on real estate, right? Me getting into self storage and yeah. now I'm being able to bring awareness to an entirely new industry that most people don't know in our community, mm-hmm. but also build wealth for me and my family. So if I, if I didn't go through that breakdown and losing the businesses and the job and COVID, I, I wouldn't be here on the other end of it. So, you know, yeah, that's, that's the best. That's dope, man. Shit. I love that. Love that. What about you? Uh, so I made my I made my first seven figures uh, in the first two years of my business. So that was 21, 22. Mm-hmm. But when I looked up in 2022, at the end of 2022, I didn't have no, I had nowhere near a million dollars. I looked at the numbers, yeah. and then now I'm at probably 100, 200. Yeah. And I'm like, yeah. and I'm like okay, where did this 900 or $800,000 go? And it literally was like, it opened my eye up to like, bro, you need to slow down. Mm-hmm. Uh, I did the same thing. I started spreading my wings too far. Yep. Instead of dialing in on one thing and building mm-hmm. that up to, to, the, to the roof, I started a semi truck company. I started. I grabbed two, three semi trucks. Mm-hmm. Tried to get in that game. Uh, I grabbed some Airbnbs, ten Airbnbs in Miami. Mm-hmm. Like one big deal, ten yep. Airbnb. Mm-hmm. Uh, I started getting luxury cars and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. So I started. Man, I start. I'm thinking that. I'm thinking that. I'm investing. That everything is gonna grow. Right. <laughs> so then I got in the midst of starting these things, and it's not as going as well as I planned. Yeah. So then I started. I'm like, bro, I'm not making no money on a couple of these businesses. Mm-hmm. What is going on? My money's out there, but then it's not returning. So then now. I really took L's on a few things. I mm-hmm. took L's uh, in the trucking stuff so far. Yeah. Uh, just to be transparent, yeah. I didn't make no money off trucking yet. Yeah. I ain't make no. I haven't made no more turn off my Airbnbs yet either. Yeah. So it's like, I, it's. I, I think that's a real conversation because, like, like when you're coming up and you hear athletes going broke, what people assume is they were just stupid with their money. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, they were just buying cars and all oh, the people. People really be investing it into businesses that they think are going to work, mm-hmm. and then you be like, okay. All right, I bought four trucks. Let's go. <laughs> and then you be like, wait, they all broke down? <laughs> what? The insurance is how much? Yeah. Was, and how much the driver went? And you look and it's like, okay, money's coming in. Mm-hmm. But a lot of times money's going out. Mm-hmm. And then sometimes you got to add something to it. You be like, okay. And then now that starts happening in the five different businesses at one time, it could be it could be a challenge. And it, and it got me. It got to me. I'm like, there's no way I made a million dollars and I don't even have none this really. Yeah. But then I started doing stuff I wanted to do too. So I started. Buying little, jewelry, yeah, yeah. you know, I thought about that. That's in a way I start yeah. help, helping family. Yeah, I start, yeah. you know, I'm in a position where I feel like I'm a backbone now. I'm helping mm-hmm. family, but when I look up, the numbers didn't make sense at all. So I was spurring out way more money than it was bringing in now, yeah. and I had to stop and yeah. slow my butt down. And then I just decided, all right, I, I learned from it though. Yeah. I know now when I make this M and this yeah. year, then next year's, uh, 
I'm not going to do that that route this time. Right, I'm going to just double, it. triple down on what's working and try to build that up as high as I can. Yeah. So I yeah. learned from that not to, you know, even, and I learned that just because you make a million dollars, that don't, it don't really, yeah. you got to learn how to keep it. Like, yeah, for yeah. sure. That, <laughs> I think that's the key, bro. And I, I appreciate you saying that because there's so, there's a lot of us that when we get started in business, we always trying to diversify so quick. And I'm like, yeah. yo, y'all. Y'all trying to do too much stuff that looks good. Yeah. Instead of like, why don't you just dial in on something that's already working? Yeah. And and now I'm not saying like, do you diversify? I'm not saying don't diversify, but I'm also saying like, don't get spread so thin yeah. that you know you can't come back because it can get. Listen, I'm telling y'all, from a guy that owns a lot of businesses, it can get very expensive. And I'm glad in a lot of ways that I waited a long time to do some stuff. And honestly, there's some business today I started. I'm like. If I could go back, I probably wouldn't have started that business mm -hmm. because of the, the the what you're getting out of it. It ain't even worth the headache sometimes that you got to deal with. You know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? So I think that's that's big for any entrepreneur. It's like, one, you do diversify. And there are, there are smart ways to diversify, leveraging credit, mm -hmm. getting into real assets. There's a lot of ways that you can diversify in ways that are smart. And what I've learned is you do it with some people that have already had some experience in the area mm -hmm. because – you already mastered one area of your life. Yeah. When you try to go into another world, it's a whole another wild, wild west that you got to figure out. Like credit is a whole wild, wild west. Commercial yeah. real estate is a wild, wild west. Yeah. Residential real estate, if you're new to it, is the wild, wild west. And so yeah. if you know somebody that knows the land, they can help you you know, navigate it yeah. uh, a lot better. So I know y'all have some type of event coming up, so we're going to talk about that in a yeah. second. But anything that you, that you wanted to say before we get off of here uh, that you didn't get a chance to say to the people about? No, I, th I think we, we pretty much gave them all the information that we needed. Um, I would just say that the most powerful thing in the world is a made up mind. Like we could teach you all the game, all the plays, but you have to make the decision to say, I'm gonna do whatever it takes to get to that next level. So I, I say that because back in 2020, when all of these things happened, I made up my mind and said, strictly real estate and focusing on that. And then I'll get to an entirely new level. So that's what I want to yeah. share. But you said you locked in, you disappeared for eight months. Yeah. <laughs> you got to it. Got Some of y'all might need to disappear for a little while. Get in your bag real I did quick. That before back I started succeeding, I did a six month lock in. That's what mm -hmm. I call it. Yeah. A six month lock in. And I teach my students to do that. If you if you have a position where you don't know this stuff, bro, yeah. you have to learn. Yeah, bro. you do. And you gotta be focused. Cause this stuff. I want to ask you a quick question. <laughs> uh -huh. and then we're gonna bring you know resident boom back in here, right? Because I heard you say some businesses that you invest in is like it's not worth mm -hmm. the time you put in it. How do you measure it? whether this business is something that you should even be doing or not because it can be making money yeah. but not the level of money that you want, right? So, yeah. and, and that's some game that we yeah. want to take because, you know, yeah, we, we just want to know how do you determine what businesses make sense for you not to, to be the So, to. Yeah, that's a good question. So I had, I had a mentor, he talked to me, he said, he's basically, he's a, there's three roles that you can play in a business. Okay. He said, the first one is uh, the entrepreneur. He said, you can be an entrepreneur in two Max three businesses. When I say entrepreneurs, like you're the talent. You're the person that's driving energy. You're the person that's going out here and doing the stuff. The second role you can play is consultant. So not, like now I just come in, I'm giving advice, and I either get a percentage of profits, revenue, whatever, just for me giving you advice on what I know. Okay. But I'm not in there every day. I'm not, like I have, literally have nothing other than advice, and I'm helping you a lot on the intern. I'm not posting you every day. That's not that's not my role. And then, um, what is it, uh, entrepreneur, consultant, and then the investor. Okay. So now, one is I'm putting in my advice. The other one is I'm putting my money in. So now, hey, you need some money for something, I get 20%, 30%, 40%, 50% of the company, whatever it is, to help it get going. But again, I'm not the entrepreneur in there mm. they're going. So now what I look at with companies is what role do I need to play? Because mm. most people that hit me up, they want me to be the entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. Like, bro, can you come in here and like do what you want to do? I'm like, nah, not, nah, I'm not really looking to do that right now. Mm. Hey, do you just need some advice? Let me think about what it is that you all want done, and let me see if I can do that, and it still be peaceful. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to pay for a headache. If you're not careful as an entrepreneur, you can invest into a headache, and now you're like, yeah, bro, yes, that it broke down again. Like I don't feel like dealing with that. You know what I'm saying? And then so then the other one is okay. If it's money, how much money does it does it take? How much money do you want? When am I going to get the money back? Is this speculative? Is it guaranteed? Like what? Like what? What do you already have in place? Um, that's working and then is there I look at like Shark Tank is like they, they invest in businesses that they already have instant relationships like they be like oh I can get you on Home Shopping Network with a phone call I can get you in this store with a phone call almost what you was talking about relationships mm -hmm. like okay if it's, if it's, is it just a few phone calls I need to make mm. we can plug it away and this is like an instant win no problem mm. entrepreneur side I gotta say okay I gotta be honest with myself on do I wanna take it on am I willing to take it on and do I have the time to take it on? Right. And for me, that's that's how I make my decisions. I mean, outside of, 
you know, talking to like mentors and praying about it. That's how I decide if I want to get in any business at this point. Because everybody's trying to get something going. Yeah. And so you you I've learned now I say no way more. When I first started making money, I was saying yes to a lot of stuff. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, okay, maybe all right, man, what you need? Oh, you want to drive? And then you realize that some people you invested into, they not as invested as you. Ooh. And then they be they be willing to quit. And you already put up all the money. I'm like, no, I'm not doing that no more. Because most people are quitters. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. And, and that's just something that I learned over time with people. And so I'm not, I'd rather have the money in my pocket than uh, and wait a little while mm. than rushing into something. Anytime somebody try to press me and doing something quick, mm. I definitely don't do it. Mm. There's something wrong there. Because why, why I got to make a decision in, <laughs> so bad. In, in, in a short period of time? And so those are just things that I started, um, I started doing and in, in deciding if I want to invest into a business or even be in the business. And I would say the last thing is, do I like the people or not? Okay. That's really the first thing, but like if I don't like the people, I'm definitely not about to be doing anything with you. You know, so I always think about like, do I want you to come to my house? Can you can you come to dinner with my family? We, we go on vacation together because you do that stuff in business. Right. And so if if that answer is no, then we're probably not gonna do business at all. Mm. Then we start looking at okay, now what capacity, what role do I need to play? Mm. Sure. That was a good question. That's something that makes sense. sense. Yeah. Yeah. That you know what I'm saying? Another play. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> Shout out yeah. our plays. Yeah. Where, where can people find you um, before you, you hop off? You can there. find me on Instagram. That's mogul lifestyle underscore. You can find me on Facebook, Ramel New Worlds. And um, continue to follow us so to get that game. All right, my guy. Appreciate yeah. you, bro. Yeah. All right, let's get you back in here, man. <laughs> Resident Boom. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Yep. No, no, other door. Uh -huh. All right, so we got Boom back. We got to ask some questions, you know what I'm saying? Because now we got, you said there were some plays on the real estate side. Now that we talked about the credit, give mm -hmm. us some side, give us some stuff. Like now that person got the, the, the credit, we talked about commercial side. What about residential side? Where so would they start? the residential side, I love it a lot because one, it changed my life. But two, it's a lower barrier entry mm -hmm. for the average person, the average investor. So for example, uh, when you're buying a residential property, you can, let's make it even simple than that. A lot of people you can utilize something called an FHA loan. Okay. You only have to put down three and a half percent, but you can go up to four units. So you can buy a four unit building and only put down three and a half percent. So let's say Does that have to be your primary residence? It'd be primary residence for a year, but you can rent out the other three units. Oh, uh, okay. So where it gets really crafty at is because let's say for example, you don't make a whole lot of money mm -hmm. and the other three units are rented. One has to be empty, but the other three units are rented. You can use 75% of the income from all three hundred units and add it to your income, even though you don't own the house yet. Hmm. So now if you only approve for $200,000, you could possibly get bumped to, let's say, 275 now, which might be just enough to qualify you for the house that you really want. Hmm. But also, if a property is already rented, when you go ahead and acquire that property, what you want to do is set your closing date up on the beginning of the month. So now they have to give you that first month, that last month, and that secure that apartment, that unit. So yeah. let's say with security, obviously you gotta really hold, but that first that month right there, and then the last month they receive. So let's say they rent out a thousand dollars apartment. That's three thousand, one thousand you gotta really keep on the side. But now let's say three, six, nine goes in your account. Mm -hmm. But let's say for example, you needed fifteen thousand dollars of clothes. That's nine grand already washed away because you got that directly from the tenant. Got it. Yeah, and then also we can set things up where we can do things like call a seller's assist where the the homeowner, especially in these times where houses are sitting, hey, look, listen, for me to close on this property, I need you to assist me with $6,000 of your profit to cover on my side, to cover my some of my fees. Mm -hmm. Now, because they're not getting any offers, they're like, shoot, like that's better than nothing. So now you can essentially close on a property with no money. That's one way. Now on the investing side, you're strictly buying your LLCs, which we do. I own a bunch of properties, but none of them are personal name. Mm -hmm. Our down payment is between 10% and 20%. The great thing about when you're buying properties in your LLC name and utilizing business lenders, they don't care where the money comes from. FHA, it has to come from, you know, your personal account, job, or you can get a gift from somebody. But when you're buying in your business, they don't care where the money goes. As long as it's there on closing day, so now we can utilize credit cards. So if you're buying a $100,000 house, you may need between ten dollars and $20,000. Yep. But as he already broke down, getting ten dollars to $20,000 is super easy. Mm -hmm. Another thing in reference to what he's going into, you, when you open up a business account or just account with that credit card company as well, so let's say you utilize um, Chase, or let's say you like one of the banks that I like back in Philly is called Freedom Credit Union. Okay. They allow you to go and do something called a balance transfer. So you have a checking account with them, 
Now you can move the money from the credit card directly to the checking account. Mm. And then you can just get her cashier's check to go ahead and buy your property. Wow. So now, which works amazing. I actually did that and I recorded it on Instagram and then showed people. Like I screen recorded me actually going to that boop, 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 transferring over. And then me at the bank pulling the cashier's check out. At, at the bank, they do this. You know, everything is all these robots. They got this actual yeah. ATM machine that prints out the cashier's check. And I recorded the whole thing and then took it to the closing table and gave it right to the title agent. So those are some of the things you can do because you don't need a whole, unless you're buying a $3 million house. Yeah. yeah but the average investor may be picking up some 100 grand, 150, yeah. 200 grand, which you only may need 10,000, 15,000, 20,000 max, which you can get directly off the business credit card. Mm. Where it even gets even better if you need something that, let's say, needs to get fixed up a little bit, we utilize that same business credit card or another one to go pay for some of the construction. So now you're getting points off of something you was going to do anyway. Mm. So now mm. we might go come down here off of points. Yep. Or we might go to Miami off of points yep. and things like that. Okay, that's so dope. killing two, three birds in one stone. Yeah, I like that. I asked them the questions. So I'm going to ask you, break down and break through. G- okay. Give me give me a, a time in your career as an entrepreneur. You had a breakdown, mm. lessons you learned, how you broke through, um, how you, like what lessons you learned to break through. My breakdown moment actually helped mold me today. Um, so when I was telling you in the, in the beginning, I was doing real estate sales and I was wholesaling real yep. estate. I had a month, it was December, my birthday, December 17th. This was December, some in the beginning of the month. And I had about, it was the exact number of $67,000 worth of deals about to close. Like that was the profit I was gonna make mm-hmm. between three deals. And they all just terminated. One person just didn't want to buy it anymore. And the other two, they, uh, the title work just, wasn't a legit deal, so all washed away. And then that's when it hit me, and I just had a moment. I was like, yo, I got to start this all over back from ground zero because I was, you know, you put a little bit of money inside, but mm-hmm. you're not really saving, saving. Yeah. So you mm-hmm. like, shit, like this mm-hmm. is like, I really got, I was really looking forward to that, and I really kind of needed that at the same mm-hmm. time. So that's when it hit me like, okay, I got to switch gears, and I got to start buying and having some rentals because worst case scenario, let's say you got $3,000 coming in every single month, that could cover your rent, yeah. that could cover it. Like at that time, I think my rent was maybe like $1,200, $1,500, that cover that, you know, at that time, I mean, my car note might've been $400, like that is covered regardless. Yeah. So that's what made me, that breakdown when I was just sitting like, yo, like this is, like this is crazy. Mm-hmm. Like this, everything just disappeared right at that moment. That's what made me like, okay, I got this chance to go around again. I'm gonna take that money. I'm gonna start buying houses and renting them out, mm. and then that was like a moment for me. Ah, I like that. Yeah. So your takeaway was to get in the real estate and start buying them. Yeah. And and have that as like consistent cash flow all yeah, the time. Yeah, I, I like that. Another breakdown moment, which really a lot of people relate to, when I was working at my job, um, I worked at retirement. Home, okay. And um, elderly people, so when it snowed, you have to that sh- that snow has to come up ASAP. Yeah. So they had an overnight shift where you they'll pay you twenty five dollars an hour to like as the snow coming in you got a shovel. Yeah. So you spend the night. So I spent the night there for a week, and my manager just long story short, my manager said, "Hey, look, your check looks like mine." Like, and I'm like, it was fifteen hundred dollars, and I was like, "But you left at three. I stayed here twenty four hours." Mm-hmm. That was a moment like, okay, I gotta figure something out. Yeah. To stay at a job for seven days, it was like six days straight, mm-hmm. and get paid $1,500. Like, I had, a, I literally sat in the car and was like, something got to give. And that's yeah. when I think the first thing I turned on was like Eric Thomas. Yeah. And then I just started diving. I was like, what can I do? And I looked into real estate, and then that's when the ball really started rolling. For me. That's dope. Yeah, man. That's, that's, I love it, man. You know, the, the break the breakdowns are the worst when you're going through it. Yeah. But when you get yeah. through it, it's like, man, I needed yeah. that to even yeah. get to where I'm at right now. Hell you know yeah. what I'm saying? And so I, I'm saying that because, like, you know, I don't know if somebody watching now, like, you're going through something. Like, you got to realize, like, yep, it sucks. It really do suck. I ain't going to lie to you. It yeah. still sucks. But the version of you that's coming is necessary. Yeah. So what you got to figure out is, like, what lesson am I supposed to learn right now mm-hmm. so that I can get to the next level? I always equate it to, like, video games. It's like, you know. Once you be the level, you never have to worry about like going back to that level. Like you always start yeah. ahead yeah, of from where you were. But like if you don't, you gotta go. There's a checkpoint. You gotta go all the way back yeah. until you can figure out how to navigate this process. And I think life is like that. Like once you learn how to get through this little situation, even if you gotta go through it again, like you go through the video game again, but it ain't gonna be as hard. You like oh, I already know how to beat this, mm-hmm. or did that, or to beat this guy. All right, let me get back back to where I'm at. And so now it's about each level. Is did I learn the lessons? that I was supposed to learn because life has a funny way of giving you the mm-hmm. same lesson in a different way 
until you pick it up. Mm -hmm. You be like, okay, cool. I'm supposed to be. I'm smarter with money. Do blah blah blah. You're like, damn, how am I? I'm in the same spot. I'm a little different. Yeah. yeah, a little bit more ice on this time than last time, but <laughs> it's the same spot. Yeah. There was a lesson that you didn't pick up. Yeah, yeah. And if you pick up that lesson, then you'll graduate to the next level. God so yeah, keep smacking until you yeah. get it. No, for sure. <laughs> sure. 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 One of the lessons I did learn: stop trading my time for money. Yeah, yeah. that's a big one, bro. And one of my mentors told me. Uh, they said, think about a hotel. They was like, the person who works the most in the hotel. Uh, they, who are they? The cleaning, cleaning people. Cleaner. They work the most, right? And they take care of that whole mm -hmm. all those people coming in there. Mm -hmm. They make the what? Least the least. And it's like. I had to really think about that. Like, man, I'm not trying to be on the bottom of the total pole like that. Yeah. I got to work smarter. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So if that's the case, I need to learn what I need to learn yeah. to get to a point where I don't got to yeah, be at the bottom right, of the total pole, working the hardest for the least yeah. amount of money. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's smart. Um, yeah, any, anything y'all want to leave everybody with for, before we wrap up, like when it comes to business credit, when it comes to mm -hmm. uh, residential real estate, or just entrepreneurship business in general? Um, for me, uh, quick, shoot your shot now on these houses. Mm -hmm. While the market is kind of funny because you can pick up stuff super cheap because people aren't, a lot of people aren't putting their offers on home. So that means your offer may be the only offer they receive, which means you got more negotiating room. And the entrepreneurship is just, honestly, it's just surround yourself with people that not even just thinking like you, but thinking bigger than you mm -hmm. because they're going to force you to pull up to them not in a bad way like you're down low and they're yeah. better than you but it's forced you to like step wow. your game up yeah yeah, yeah. force you like having some real sparring partners mm -hmm. like like not someone that you can easily beat them you know in reference to sparring a metaphor mm -hmm. but somebody that's literally jabbing you can't duck yeah. it now you like it's forcing you to be better so i think that's really really the biggest thing and then just really shooting your shot like that idea that you have in your mind right now is not crazy like it's really possible and just give it a real shot and you 100%, even if it doesn't work, I like, I like equate it to, you know, applying for credit cards and things like that. They have to tell you why you denied. Yeah. So when you shoot your shot, you're going to see why it didn't work. Now you can just, That's okay, right. let me re change, let me change that. I can go ahead and go ahead and do it different the second go around. That's smart. I like yeah. that. Yep. Uh, getting a mentor uh, yeah. has been what changed my life and my own yeah. experience. So I recommend everybody doing that. But on the other end of that, we've been having some flair about coaches and mm -hmm. mentors are like that, oh, this person may not talk this or that, or, but we gotta worry about execution. Mm -hmm. uh, a lot of people can be in the same program that I was in and tell me that that program wasn't nothing. That program generated me seven, seven figures. Mm -hmm. So I believe it's a lot to do with execution on mm -hmm. us, the students or a person that's consuming this stuff right. to execute, but then also to execute now. Uh, a lot of people like to wait, procrastinate, and play around with it. Mm -hmm. but, but man, life, I mean, the world keeps spinning. Right? Yeah. You're not mm -hmm. waiting on nobody. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you waiting and playing around and not executing now, uh, I think that delays your progress. So I think people should take a heed of, man, when you do learn something, first you got to learn it, but then also execute it, execute yeah. it in a quickly manner. Yeah, I love that. I love so, that. Yeah. Uh, where can everybody find y'all at? So you can follow me on Instagram, D-S-B-O-O-N-E. Yeah. And uh, underscore Smitty the Goat. Uh, we got a big collaboration thing going on. You talking about the five day challenge we got going on? Mm -hmm. Boom. Oh yeah, yeah. So we have a five day challenge. Mm -hmm. um, it was actually six days. They don't. They'll find out when they go to the website. But I love this so much because I think it's more powerful than anybody else out there is doing. Because you hear people talking about real estate, but yeah. then it's like that gap where where do I get the money from? It's like oh. I just told you how to buy the houses. Yeah. Then it's like, oh, I'm a business funder. Okay, what do I do after I get the money? Look, that's your problem. I'll just give you the money. Yeah. But now is an opportunity where we can show you how. It's literally a train. We just stop in every stop. Get on the train. We're showing you how to go ahead and set up your credit report properly. Then go how to get the funding. And then we're going to show people how to get at least $50,000 on that week. Mm -hmm. And we did challenges before where we funded like $1.5 that week. Wow. And then we go ahead and change it right into, okay, this is how, obviously you can't close out on a house that same week, but we're getting you to put offers in on properties that same week because now it takes about 30 days for you to close an house. So now you're getting the funding, getting everything put together. So by the time you close, you're all set to go. And then also showing you another side of real estate, which is commercial real estate. So some people may collab hey you just got a hundred thousand fun this week i got a let's just jump right into the bigger stuff because now it is a little maybe a little weary getting right into the bigger out of the game mm -hmm. but then when you have someone like ramel mogul that's teach you the actual step by step now it's not as hard as if you just did it on your own so yep. we like i i almost yeah i want to say we're the only people that's doing like a full 
eight a while. We just need to do the Z, which is actually show up, do the home reset over the week, and really execute. And it's going, it's going to be super powerful. Dope. And where, where would they find? Go to the website, letsfundyourfreedom.com. Um, and then we have two different tiers. is general mission, then it's VIP. I strongly recommend going VIP, VIP. because, mm -hmm. yeah, you're going to get yeah. way more game, way more value. Um, you're going to get game as, in reference to general mission, but the, uh, the whole challenge is every day from 8 to 9. Okay. When you're VIP, you come on at 7. So you get a whole extra time, and that's just straight Q&A. Because you might get on Monday night, drop a whole lot of plays, and then Tuesday you're like, oh, I got questions. questions. Yeah, I'm always going to have questions. So now you can't even get those <laughs> yeah. questions there because on Tuesday night we're going straight back into the next next phase yep. of the game. So just getting access to that. And then another thing I like about the challenge, you can't fake five days. Yeah. Like you on, you might get on, uh, record a little one-minute video. Mm -hmm. That's scripted. We already mm -hmm. talked about We already knew what topic we're going to talk about. Five days five to ten hours that full week you can't fake that yeah that's especially right. somebody asks you a question live you can't it's, it's real deal, yeah you know so. what you're talking about yeah yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. dope dope i love yeah. it well listen y'all i mean look i learned a lot of stuff today too i love i love having dope conversations with dope people and y'all just learned some great plays when it comes to credit real estate commercial and residential uh so y'all just got to go run we'll see you on the next episode